Hello, and welcome back to Lightning GIS. In this episode, we're going to focus on the file types that ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro use to save your projects um, that you're working on. Project files contain links to GIS data, and you need to understand that relationship, which requires a quick look under the hood of GIS about the relationship of your map project file and your GIS data set files and how that works. Um, before we move on to start this episode, I'd just like to mention that there are two more uh, related episodes that go over file naming in GIS and some of the rules um, that can help you avoid pulling your hair out. And also a quick overview of how you import data and get it into GIS. Okay, with that, let's get started. Um, first of all, we need to talk about the two file managers that you're going to use as a, as a GIS um, user. First is our catalog. Our catalog is the file management system built into GIS. It's got its own, pur it's got its purposes. We'll talk about those in a second. But the other on the right here is Windows File Explorer. Windows File Explorer is Windows File Manager. So it's it's used to uh, organize and and move and manipulate files within Windows. So let's talk about the sort of purposes of both. First of all, our catalog, this is the tool you're generally going to want to use if you need to rename your GIS files. Um, it's also the tool you're going to use to create data connections to GIS data folders, which is something you can create a connection in our catalog, which is sort of like a shortcut right to a specific um, GIS data folder. And uh, you'll use our catalog to add that data into different projects and maps and so forth. Now Windows File Explorer, this is used when you're initially importing the data. Maybe you've gotten it off of the web and downloaded it and you need to uncompress it. It came in a zip archive and you got to get it uncompressed and uh, filed away in the right place on your computer and then when you get all that done that's when you go over to our catalog you might rename it and then add it to your map. So let's talk, talk about ArcGIS and files. First of all, we've got two main desktop ArcGIS products. ArcMap um, is the first one, and when you save a project in ArcMap, it saves as an MXD file. Now this is just like if you save a, a Word document, it's a .docx, or a PowerPoint file is a .pptx file. Well, ArcMap is MXD. ArcGIS Pro, a different desktop application of GIS, is um, it uses a file extension called APRX, so .aprx. Now both of those are project files, and it's important to understand that in an MXD or an APRX file, you do not actually save the GIS data that's being displayed in those files. So you have a project, that project saved as an MXD, um, and you add data to that. When we say you add data, that's really a misnomer. You're not really adding the data to the MXD file. What you're doing is you're telling ArcMap, I want to display this data in this file, and the data is located here. This is where it's at on my computer, and so ArcMap saves a pointer to where that data is on your hard drive inside the MXD file. Now think about this. This kind of makes sense. If you know anything about GIS data, think about uh, aerial photo. An aerial photo is a raster data set and it can be quite large. Like, it's nothing for an aerial photo to be a gigabyte or two gigabytes in size, which is a really large file. Now I have um, MXD files that have 10 or 15 different aerial photos plus other rasters plus shape files plus other types of feature classes. If every one of those had to be saved within that MXD, pretty soon that MXD, that one project file could be 20, 30 gigabytes in size. Imagine trying to share that with anybody. Uh, it would be a pain. Even just opening that up would take forever on your computer. Um, so it makes sense that GIS isn't actually saving the data within the file. What it's doing is it's saying this data that is displayed in this file actually lives here on this hard drive. Now this is important. This is a source of confusion for many GIS novices. So 
Um, since we're only pointing to a data, let's say that here's my MXD file called myproject.mxd, and it's pointing through this directory that's in the same folder. The MXD file is in this folder called data. Um, there's an MXD file in that folder. The data folder also has another folder called final, another folder called shapefiles. Now, inside this final folder, there's a geodatabase, and inside that geodatabase, which is a type of GIS data structure, there is a feature class called Ozark Low Water Crossings. Now this Ozark Low Water Crossings is the GIS data that's being displayed on this map, these red dots. So GIS is not storing that data in the MXD file, it's just making a note about where that data lives on your hard drive. Now, if we do something to this geodatabase or that feature class that's in the geodatabase, say we delete those or we move them somewhere else, what's going to happen is we're going to have a big problem. That file is no longer there, but the MXD goes to look for it. It says, okay, I need to display this Ozark Low Water Crossings data, and that data is located. <gasps> it's gone. Where'd it go? I don't know what to do. So you get the red exclamation mark which means that you've got a broken data link. And look, now your beautiful map of red dots is blank. There's nothing there. So to fix that, you either have to point GIS to where the file is now, to where its new location is, or you've got to undelete it and put it back where it was. Um, either way, it's a little bit of a pain. And uh, some maps might have 50 different data layers in it. And if you move the data, all of a sudden, none of those layers work. Now the same thing is going to happen if you move the MXD. If you move that MXD and say it's here and you save it over to this map folder, well now this maps folder doesn't have a final folder sitting beside it that's got a geodatabase in it. So the same problem happens. So it's really important when you develop these data structures that you you organize and file your data within that uh, path, within this uh, path structure and then you leave it there. Don't go moving stuff around. Alright, well I hope that was a helpful overview of how GIS deals with uh, project files and GIS data sets. Please look for the upcoming videos in this series that will cover uh, GIS tips, tricks, and rules for file naming and an overview of the workflow for importing data into ArcGIS. Thanks for being with us today.